Hello, my name is C.J. Levick, and it's my privilege in these last days to bring you great news. If you are in Christ, we are about to end our pilgrimage in this world that is passing away. I also have hopeful news if you are seeking answers to the most important questions in life. Perhaps you still have some doubts about where you will be spending eternity. If that describes you, then be encouraged as this video will put you on the path, the path to pardon and forgiveness that will lead you to the valley of decision where there is a Savior waiting to welcome you into His family. I would really encourage everyone to visit www.ribvideos.com where you can not only watch this entire 19-chapter, 5-hour video book, but so much more. The complete 19-chapter video book is only available at ribvideos.com. Everything I have produced on Rock Island Books over the past 15 years is now available to watch online or download at no charge, including over 220 videos, 14 of our best-selling illustrated books, 40 end times prophetic charts. All this is available to view and download at no charge. Go to ribvideos.com. Did you know that the first communication between Adam and God, Elohim, was a prophecy? We find this prophecy in Genesis 2, verses 15 through 17. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to cultivate it and tend it. The Lord God commanded the man, saying, From any tree of the garden you may freely eat. But from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat, for on the day that you eat from it you will certainly die. Now you might be thinking to yourself, this is not really a prophecy, it simply sounds like a commandment. This is the first mention, according to our English Bible, that reports that God said, Thou shalt not. Now, when you hear those words, Thou shalt not, what do you think of? If you have any experience with God's Word, and I assume most of you that are watching this video do, your mind probably fast-forwards to the Ten Commandments, where we hear this, Thou shalt not refrain, repeated over and over again. So I know I'm treading on thin ice if I say anything that would seem to diminish the obvious warning that God spoke to Adam. So I would like to notify you in advance so that you can be assured that what I'm about to reveal does not diminish the force of this cautionary warning, Thou shalt not. My passion is to the best of my ability to figure out what God actually said. I owe no allegiance to any denomination or religious tradition. My interest is in what God said, not what man said, and with that in view, I have spent untold hours exploring the Bible in the original language of Hebrew and Greek. In the 15-year quest, I have never ever discovered one single thing that diminishes or changes God's revelation to man in the phonetic Hebrew and the Greek that has been translated into English. But I have found hundreds of examples in the literal Hebrew and Greek that amplify and magnify the English translation. So let me ask, can we know what God said exactly to Adam as he gazed at the forbidden fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Well, the answer, surprisingly, is yes, and it's revealed in the original language of the garden. The very first time I explored the actual Hebrew word that was translated Thou shalt not in our English Bible, I was literally shaken, and since that moment often moved to tears when I realized what God actually said to Adam almost 6,000 years ago. The Hebrew word translated in Genesis as Thou shalt not is the Hebrew word Lamet Aleph, pronounced Le or La, composed of two letters. So let's carefully look at the Lamed, followed by the Aleph, reading right to left, in order to discover what mysteries these two letters hold. This will not make much sense and cannot be understood until you go back and look at the name of God, Elohim. So let's begin by reviewing the name of God. Aleph, Lamed, He, Yod, Mem. Aleph, God the Father. Lamed, God the Son. God the Holy Spirit is He. Yod, God doing a mighty work, the picture of the hand and the arm. And finally, Mem, 
so that we would be notified that God separated the water from the water, making a home on dry land that God, Elohim, called earth, the place where we live. Take a look at the name of God, Elohim, and see if you can discover the mystery and revelational meaning of Lamed Aleph. Do you see the perfection and revelation in the order of the first three letters that are also pictures and numbers in the name of God, Elohim, as revealed in the language of the garden? Aleph, God the Father, Lamed, God the Son, and He, God the Holy Spirit. The perfection of the revelation of Elohim begins with the Father who is first, the Son who is second, and the Holy Spirit, the Revelator, who is third. Now let me ask you a question. What happens in the earthly realm when a son arrogates himself above and defies the wishes of his father? Well, if you have children, you probably know the answer. What happens when the authority of the father is usurped and the will of the son surplants the wishes of the father? The mystery of the meaning of the two letters Hebrew word translated in English as thou shalt not is not only solved once you understand the perfection in the hierarchy embedded in the name of God. But remember that God reveals a three distinctive person hierarchy in his name, Elohim. The problem is that we are used to thinking of that hierarchy in terms of a hierarchy of importance. And on this earth, that may well be the case, but that is not the case in heaven. And it is definitely not the case with God, Elohim. Elohim reveals a perfect hierarchy with no competition that is ruled only by unity and cooperation revealed in the three pictures Aleph, Lamed, He. And that revelation in three reveals God's sacred number three that means divine perfection. It is a trinity of divine perfection that demonstrates unified purpose and equality that, if we are to be honest, we must report that we simply cannot fully understand. But as those who are indwelt by God's Spirit, we are quick to confess by faith that we believe it, and that pleases God. The scriptures in the New Testament declare this truth unambiguously in the New Testament book of Philippians, where I have added for clarification the Hebrew names associated with the English names in the verse. So reading from Philippians 2, 5-11. through Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach who being in the form of God, Elohim, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, Elohim, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, Adam. And being found in fashion as a man, Adam, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God, Elohim, also hath highly exalted him and given him a name, Hashim, which is above every name, Hashim. That at the name of Jesus, Yeshua, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus, Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, is Lord, capital L-O-R-D, yod heh vav -He, to the glory of God, Elohim the Father. So what happens on earth when the creature Adam, who bears the image of God, arrogates himself above God Elohim? What do we call what happened when Adam disobeyed the instructions of his heavenly father? Well, we could call it a lot of things. It was the arrogance of the creature. It was the great rebellion that results in chaos and confusion. It is the act that invited God's wrath. It is death. There is one more thing we could call it. Something that will help us remember what this is all about. Something that paints a sad picture of the Lamet and the Aleph. Let's further explore the mystery of the Hebrew word Lamet Aleph. The mystery begins to unravel when we simply investigate the actual meaning of the Hebrew word translated thou shalt not as it's reported in our English Bible. The literal translation from Hebrew to English is much more enlightening than what is disclosed in the English translation as it gets to the very essence of the meaning of Lamed Aleph. Translated from the original Hebrew to the English, Lamed Aleph simply means not God. And with that as a starting point, let's explore the original pictures and numbers of the language of the garden to see what else we can discover. Clearly, Adam was the first one to receive a prophetic word of warning, 
But that's just the beginning of the revelation. Was the warning from Elohim a simple demand to obey, as is disclosed in the essence of the English translation, Thou shalt not? The answer is no, it's much, much more. If we explore the literal translation based on the pictures and numbers, the layers of meaning begin to be revealed as a much more powerful and prophetic picture unfolds that cannot be captured with the command, Thou shalt not. What is God's nickname? God's nickname is El, Aleph Lamed, and I am assuming that you've already figured out that the word Lamed Aleph is God's name, Aleph Lamed, backwards. So we should not be surprised that the literal Hebrew translation of God's name backwards is based on the fact that Aleph Lamed is God and Lamed Aleph is not God. Now let's begin to explore the pictographic and numeric Hebrew, where we will discover that not God is the starting point that unfolds much, much more. If Aleph Lamed is the revelation of God the Father and God the Son as noted in the name Elohim, then we are to understand that God, the Aleph, the first letter in the name of Elohim, has a son, and he's simply identified in the name as Lamed. The son is pictured in God's name, Elohim, as the shepherd's staff, and he is also pictured as the voice of authority. The Hebrew letter Lamet means the voice of authority, as pictured by the shepherd's staff, the staff that guides, directs, and rescues the sheep. We are to understand that the sheep will only hearken to the voice of the shepherd, as he is the voice of authority. He is also identified with the number 30. The number 30, as used in Scripture, is the price of redemption. Remember that it was the prophetic price of redemption, the price of 30 pieces of silver that paid for the perfect Lamb of God that John the Baptist, who came in the spirit of Elijah, the prophet, identified in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 23. I am the voice of one crying in the desert, make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. By the way, the quote from Isaiah can be found in Isaiah 43. Now, I've checked the original Hebrew, and I can report without any question that the way of the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, prophesied in Isaiah 43 and quoted in John 123, is not Adonai. It's not Hashim. It is yod heh vav -Heh, the Lord, who is Elohim, God. And who was John the Baptist, who came in the spirit of Elijah prophesying about? The answer is discovered in the next couple of verses. In John 129, we read, the next day he, that is John, who came in the spirit of Elijah, saw Jesus, Yeshua, coming toward him, and he said, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. And who was the Lamb of God? He was Yeshua, who was also the Lord yod heh vav -Heh. Clearly the name Elohim not only was the name God revealed as the Creator, but it's also the name in which God the Father prophesied ahead of time a redemptive plan to save Adam's race, knowing ahead of time that he would not heed his prophetic warning regarding the forbidden fruit. And now let's translate the prophetic warning into plain English. As God, Elohim, and Adam, the representative of all mankind, stand before the tree of the knowledge of the good and evil, God says to Adam, Adam, someone is going to come along who is not me, not Aleph, God the Father, not Lamed, God the Son, who is the voice of authority. That someone is going to speak with the voice of authority, Lamed, and tell you to do something that I, Aleph God, the Father, have warned you not to do. Adam, the moment you listen and obey to that voice of authority that is not me is the moment you will surely die, as our relationship in that instant of time will change from father-son to father and enemy of Elohim. Out of fellowship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and under the curse of Elohim's wrath, God's wrath, separated from me, which is by its very definition, spiritual death. And when Adam took and ate the forbidden fruit, in that moment, Adam and all his descendants, including you and me, became servants in bondage to sin and subject to its companion, death. And what should we call this? I have a name for it based on how Elohim, or El, God the Father, who is also in concert with the voice of authority, God the Son, who together are Aleph Lamed, is turned on its head 
turned backwards, reversing all the promises as it propels Adam forward into a hellish future that Adam is incapable of changing as man can provide no remedy for what I will call the great reversal when Adam listened to that was not God, but God's enemy, Satan, the serpent. Everything I have produced on Rock Island Books over the past 15 years is now available to watch online or download at no charge, including over 220 videos, 14 of our best-selling illustrated books, 40 end times prophetic charts. All this is available to view and download at no charge. Go to ribvideos.com.